so i just recorded a massive intro um and didn't hit play but maybe that was for a reason so what i was talking about was the fact that i have kind of receded from my business in terms of putting my face out and one of my a big part of my branding is about self-acceptance and is about loving yourself as you are it's about not looking at pain points and it's looking at growth points and reconciling yourself with the fact that you are where you are and you can absolutely grow from that point and the point that you are at now is a hundred percent acceptable <laughs> um so what better day to come and put my face back on here with a massive spot let's just take a big old look at this big big spot of reality um because why not and my dirty dressing gown and my makeup down my face like let's let's go all in and you know what I genuinely think that there was probably a small part of my subconscious because these things do happen that didn't press play so that I could do a quick little practice run to see how comfortable I felt about being on camera and the idea of putting this out um, because I do feel self-conscious. I don't like having spots. I very, very rarely get them, but I understand why it's there. Welcome. <laughs> to another episode of Glimmer Side Chats with me, Annie Eclectic. I'm sorry if my eyes are all over the place. I'm still like, I can never find the camera. And honestly, like, I'm thinking whilst I'm talking, so I'm going to be looking at different parts of my brain and my etheric body for those thoughts, aren't I? So, um, sorry, that was a bit cheeky rude. Cheeky rude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that subconsciously, I probably needed to give myself some practice space there. And you know what? It actually feels really good. And I feel like I really want to bring myself back to this space again. Um, I first started putting my face quite prominently on my business and having conversations about what I'd drawn intuitively when I was doing my ear thing by going live on Instagram. And primarily that was practice for um, this for making my podcast and unfortunately due to various circumstances like my son's illness and hospital visits and then him he's growing up so now he's like starting to wake up earlier we used to get a good good sleep until about eight o'clock um now it's more like ten past six this morning is a rare morning um so it had to stop and then i started to just kind of recede and start doing you know more faceless con content like a lot of my content is about nature um, and and most of the point of that is that I want it to be about you and not about me um, but also I do realize that a lot of the reason why people are drawn to my business and drawn to me is because of me so I need to remember to keep showing up and this is kind of me bringing myself back but let's have a little look at the reason as to why i have been going through a journey um of pretty much disassociating from my body um we've been through a lot as a family um, and it all started when we were pregnant and we had to have a CVS and we had no idea what was going on and at that point you know we were <sighs> stuck in a tiny flat during the vid and we had about two weeks there where we effectively were grieving our child. Thankfully things went well, things the test all came back clear um, we now know that they tested for the wrong thing, but I'm so glad that they didn't get it right in a way. Um, and I know that in part, I have been blaming myself and my body for the changes within my son. Um, 
And then the last couple of days, yesterday especially, was a really powerful one. Um, I'd started doing a bit of like purposeful exercise. I did it with, with my son. I felt like that was the most comfortable way for me to do that. Um, and I've always been a sit-up skill. You know, I was a tennis player, I needed to make sure my core was strengthened. So I did a lot of uh, sit-ups, which is uh, effectively, it's somatic work, isn't it? Releasing. Um, and afterwards, and I was just like, I just had all these big feelings. Um, and I had started working on crocheting a top. Um, and it's, you know, a bit of a racier top than I usually wear. I've always, like, been quite a baggy clothes kind of person. Um, and I just kept thinking, like, I don't have the body to pull this off. I don't have the confidence to pull this off. Why am I bothering to make this? And really bullying myself, which is just not very nice. Um, and then I was just kind of staring into space and all of a sudden burst out crying like really big crying and I realised that it was because I was looking at a painting that I had done when I was on sick leave during that time during my pregnancy um, and I had actually blocked from my mind that that was when I had done that painting <laughs> um, and I just sobbed, I just cried and then I remembered that about a week ago, a week or so ago, I had created a video whilst out walking and it's talking about my why for my business and for some reason I have always just had a really big block against admitting that my son is a big part of my why for my business and it's a huge part of my why like he needs me to be available his health issues require me to be able to drop what i'm doing and spend a week in hospital if necessary um it requires me to run my business alongside looking after him full time for eight weeks is the last period i think yeah, he went uh, home for eight weeks and then he was back at nursery for a week and a half and then he's been back at home again for another two weeks. Like, a normal traditional business, I could not work for them. That's that's not normal. Um, as, a, as somebody who used to employ people for a business, I am effectively what is called unemployable. <laughs> so I really need this business to be a success. And part of the big, the, one of the big parts of this business that I have is showing up as I am. No hair, no makeup, not brushing my hair and saying, it's okay. It's okay to be normal. It's okay to have a massive mountainous pimple spot thing on your face. It's okay to have chocolate spills down your dressing gown because you were enjoying your pudding last night. That is okay. And maybe that big release that I had yesterday, yeah, it's a huge part of my personal journey and it's going to take a lot of work to do. My beautiful friend, Rebecca, um, from Circle Wellbeing, said to me last night that healing is like being an archaeologist and having to be gentle and brushing the dust away and examining what's underneath um, and that is so true um, and that was funny because that worked in correlation to a video that I'd taken where I was doing some crochet. I realised that I was doing it way too small for my patients um, so I started frogging it which is taking it apart and I was looking at the stitches, each stitch coming apart and I thought, yeah, this is much like a healing journey as well, isn't it? Every step, every stage, every stitch matters and creates the whole and deserves that examination and that time and that honouring. 
but we don't have to have a healing journey that doesn't help elevate us. That's the point. A healing journey should elevate us. We should learn from the things that we're healing from and we should take what we've learned and turn that into some kind of magic for us because it's ours to have and to hold. It's our experiences. And rather than letting that be a negative, we should definitely hold on to that and allow it to be a positive and allow us to shine through at our very, very best selves, even if we look horrendous because it's first thing in the morning. <laughs> and you've got a big spot. Anyway, it's starting to rain, so I'm going to grab my coffee and I'm gonna go inside. Anyway, oh, it smells amazing. With that, I hope that you find your glimmers, love them, hold them, save them for later, and have a truly wonderful day. Okay, bye.